This episode of the Restoration Today podcast is brought to you by Prism Specialties. Prism Specialties proudly provides a robust range of specialty restoration services to help those affected by a disaster and other unforeseen damages. Whether it's residential or commercial, Prism Specialties delivers effective recovery solutions to help contractors, adjusters, and the insured. Prism offers expertise in restoring electronics, art, documents, textiles. This includes kitchen appliances, computers, works on paper, sculptures, leather goods, shoes, industrial machinery, and more. What many companies don't specialize in or may consider a total loss, Prism Specialties can restore. So when life needs an expert, call Prism Specialties at 888-291-5905 or visit prismspecialties.com to learn more. Hey, Restorers, welcome to a fresh episode of the Restoration Today podcast. I am excited to have another merger conversation today, which is kind of my favorite kind of conversation to have in the industry, especially when I know the companies and I'm excited to see them partner up and come together. Um, This is kind of an interesting trend that we are now seeing in the industry as companies wade through the um, industry consolidation, what the market looks like. And so I am excited to have Kenyon Martin with Restore Right and Jeremy Peterson with Elite Restoration. They're both in Idaho. They are on the podcast today because they have a big announcement that they are merging and they are going to be a big powerhouse in Idaho together now, which is super exciting. So um, Jeremy, I'm going to toss it over to you first. Welcome to the podcast. Um, Tell us a little bit about you and your company. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. So I started Elite Restoration back in 2009, um, right as the downturn uh, happened, and um, really started out of uh, trying to keep some of my other employees from Peter Schmiller's, my general contracting business, busy, and thought this would be a perfect opportunity to be able to fill in the gaps and the slow, slow time that we have. And that lasted maybe like three months. And then it quickly just kind of snowballed into, they were two separate companies, Mm -hmm. separate employees. And um, fast forward 15 years, and now we've got five locations throughout Idaho um, servicing clients. And we've got like 75 employees currently. And so as we continue to grow and trying to expand, uh, we've found that this is the best way is to partner up with with people like Kenyon that uh, have the staff, have the same values that we do and can add to what we're already doing for the communities that we serve. So that was a good move during a bad economic time. That's awesome. It's... Yeah, it uh, crazy what it's turned into. Like say it was really just to keep those employees busy in the off season, if you will, and it didn't uh, didn't take long for us to gain traction and yeah. What is the main Kenyan? I'm going to toss it over to you in a second, but I'm curious what the main source of loss is in Idaho because you are kind of isolated from bigger weather events. So other than maybe fires, so what is your main kind of event that you have there? Yeah, so we do a lot of fire fire jobs, um, residential and commercial, um, but our mainstay is the water damage claims. Okay. So your typical supply lines, toilet overflows, yeah. that stuff. Okay, beautiful. All right, Kenyon, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a minute since we've been yeah. able to catch up, so I'm excited that you're here. So, all yeah. right, for people who don't know you, introduce yourself and share a little bit about Restore Right. Yeah, so um, I'm Kenyon Martin. I'm from Idaho as well, a couple hours uh, away from where Jeremy resides. Uh, heavily agricultural area, grew up on a potato farm. In Idaho, my family still farms potatoes, um, and I I was working as a uh, ironically as a nuclear operator at a facility, and it was so dry and boring for me that I started several companies on the side, um, and restoration was one of them. There was a lot of transferable skills from the nuclear world as far as contamination control and cleanup that it just kind of worked out well. We started Restore Right in the fall of 2016. I think like August is when I like filed the paperwork. And by December, I had quit my government job and my wife and I jumped into this full time. We had three kids, one that was almost turning one and 
thought that there's no time like the present to try. So we, we put all our eggs in a basket and uh, it's worked out well for us. We, um, we, we're in one location. Um, we've gone up to between 30 to 40 employees, depending on um, the season. And it's been a huge, huge ride. Um, you know, no one in my family's ever managed more than 15 employees in a season time. So there's been a lot of learning from on our end of things administratively. Um, I thought all of those classes in college about HR and business were just stealing money from me. Didn't realize there was value there. So um, that has been a lot of learning, but we've, we've, uh, we've learned that in the end, it's, it's about who you are as a person, how you make someone feel what your values are. You know, we didn't start the business with core values that those came later when we started wanting to scale and grow. And once we de decided what those core values were, we were able to to grow well and then um, and then just kind of trying to find ourselves with other like-minded people that want to be known for the same things. So. Awesome. Okay, so how long, can you know, toss this to you first, how long have you two known each other and how did this conversation of maybe coming together, joining the companies together start? So I think we met um, the first time in 2019. Uh, I was still new. Um, I, I think it was 2019 because I know that I started in 2016. By the end of 2017, I was lost. 2018, I hired Violent. They helped organize some things for us. And 2019, Jeremy reached out, uh, just wanting to catch up and kind of, I think, get to know who the new kid in East Idaho was. Um oh. And I went out and met his facility. Um, at that point, a merger or an acquisition wasn't on, uh, even on our radar, because we had just started gaining traction and sure. felt like uh, um, this is something we want to do. So well, we've been in contact with Elite uh, admirably last several years. Um, it's funny, their, their color scheme and logo, I think, it is very similar to ours um uh, i think my trucks had a cooler wrap but if i had to pick a second coolest wrap it would be be their <laughs> trucks and their people and um they're just always uh a company that we felt like we wanted to strive to be to be like you know service several locations have a consistent reputation in each of those locations of what we're trying to accomplish and um and then you know this year uh, we could probably get into it more, but I've met with several PE firms and other business owners the last, well, that the PE thing has been crazy the last few years, right? Yeah. I've met, um, um, with several in the last couple of years, just inner, just always seeing what, what they bring to the table. And then, mm -hmm. uh, Natalie and I always kind of reevaluate, like, are we, are we providing the best opportunity for our employees? Or is there yeah. something out there we should be looking at, right? So this year has been a, um, a very different year for us, for sure. I think majority of con restoration contractors have noticed they dip in the market mm -hmm. and had to get a lot better about their processes and, and systems and, and who they had on staff. Um, we had to do the same thing. We had to uh, switch up we had on staff in certain positions to make sure people are in their best processes. And then at the same time, we're about, are we um, still um, able to help our own people uh, reach that level of uh, in their career and professionalism? Like, is it so something we could do differently, something to do more? And, and then when we met Jeremy, uh, just hasn't even been, it's been maybe a, like five weeks, you know, it just, it just went really well. It was like the perfect first date on a perfect setting, whatever, you know, like everything just aligned really well. What he was trying to do, uh, the conversations, our values, like everything just really went really well. And um, I don't know, there's a taboo about Mormons getting married in six weeks or less. This is honestly almost the same thing. So it's a uh, it's been a really exciting time for us to to collaborate with him so
So Jeremy, is that something you normally do when there's a new kid on the block? You give him a call to uh, let's uh, scope out this new player on the block. Is that your MO? Yeah. Well, so he he definitely he came into that market um, and caused some waves up there. Um, he took over for another company that uh, had been in that market for a lot of years and was able to pick up a lot of the work that uh, when they exited um, that area. And we we struggled in that Eastern Idaho market to get traction. We've been in that market for like six years, and we've 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 got market share, but just couldn't get enough traction for it to really stick and make um, get us where we wanted to be. So definitely, when we first reached out to Kenyon, you know, it was like six years ago, um, and he wasn't ready. But like, I just I. I can see the passion in Ken and just his values and everything that he stood for really aligned with what we we stand for. And, you know, hoped that at some point we could circle back around and, and make something come together. And um, fast forward to, like Kenyon said, probably about five, five weeks ago. And I reached back out just to see how things were going and <clears throat> see if there was any other opportunities. And if things had changed and he was open to having some more discussion. And so we came down and, we met and we, we hit it off. It was like, we hadn't skipped a beat in the last six years, just talking and um, going through, you know, his vision of where he wants to be and wanting to take the company and where elite is and where we plan on taking the company. And uh, I really excited for what we're going to be able to do coming together and joining our two forces together. So. Had you been going through a lot of those PE calls and probably getting courted by probably all the big players over and over? Have you been going through that the last yeah. few years too? Yeah. For, I would say probably for the last four years, we mm -hmm. get no exaggeration. We probably get an email, a certified letter or phone calls weekly. Um, and I, I tell everyone that call, call me, <clears throat> we're not, we're not interested right now. Like we're, we're building something. We're doing our own acquisitions right now. And it's exciting for, for us to be able to be in that position where we're, we're saying, Hey, thanks for thinking of us. We'd love to, you know, maybe talk in the future, but right now, like we've got a, a solid team in place and a really awesome future that, ahead of us. So. Perfect. Okay. So what are, what are the plans from here? Well, I guess, okay. So this has gone really fast. So I guess on the logistical side, share, I guess what you're willing to with the people out there. Cause you're the second pair that I've talked to in the last month of companies like nearby markets that have decided to come together and through an acquisition or a merger. So did you guys use a broker? Have you used anybody in the industry? Have you gotten this with like your own attorneys? Kenyon's shaking his head. Kenyon, you want to take that? What is the logistical side of it? Like? Oh, I'm just, it's been, <laughs> It's been very, I, I would guess, like a gentleman handshake. And maybe that sounds um, very informal and professional to some. But um, I know that Viola and our, my consulting firm, they're, I mean, he's, John is more gray now than he was in, uh, six weeks ago because he's like, this is moving so fast. You don't have all the things dialed in. Like um, attorneys have started drafting you know, up some agreements and stuff like that. But it's really just about, for me, it's like, um, it's just an extension of trust. Like, this is what I want to see happen. And and um, I know Jeremy's on the same page of wanting that to see happen and has a best interest in ensuring that, that you know, personally, my family's taken care of and my employees are taken care of and we're able to retain all of all of our, the employees that want to stay on. And, um and it's just, it's just been really easy uh, to come to an agreement on everything. So, like, the only awkward part when we were meeting was there was like, okay, well, uh, what's it worth? What's it worth to you, right? And, I, and um, we were within two and a half percent without even talking to each other. What I had envisioned of what I thought my company's worth and what he felt like it was worth, we were within two and a half percent of difference and. And I thought my company was worth, and maybe I'm saying this too soon, but I thought it was worth twice what um, the last offers we were getting from some other people, right? And mm -hmm. and so we got several offers. And I think some people are just throwing mud on the wall, hoping you'll yeah. grasp or take it. Um, and so for for us to be that close within a evaluation, I thought was uh, really in line with, with you know, what we're trying to do. So. 
that's that's impressive okay so jeremy from your seat what um what do you envision this looking like from here like with is we talked a little, a little bit about this offline what's happening with the branding what's going on with the company and the employees and all of that what does that look like from here yep yeah so we uh we're going to restore rights got a really strong brand in that eastern Ohio market it's way stronger than our our elite brand is um, so we plan on maintaining that brand for probably the next 12 to 15 months, slowly phasing out to where we're operating under one brand, just because there's strength in having one brand and uniformity. Um, but we don't want to downplay what Restore Right means in that community either, right? So um, our plan is to kind of slowly transition and roll that out and do a lot of collaboration to let people know, hey, it's you know, it's transitioning to elite restoration, but you're still getting that restore right service and the people that you've come to know and love working at restore right that are with team elite now. So, um, and then as far as integrating the teams and stuff, we're, we're hosting um, a mixer, if you will, just kind of get both teams in that market to kind of get to know each other outside of the work environment, right? Like break down some of those barriers and truly get to know each other at a personal level because one of our, both of our core values is family, right? Family is one of the most important things. And we spend a lot of work together at work. Um, yep. You know, eight, 10 hours a day, maybe 12 hours a day or longer. So you've got to really know and appreciate the people you work with because they are, they're just like family. So. All right. So I'm curious what advice you two would give other restorers in the seats that you've both been in. You've been courted by PE, you've been courted by the big firms, you've been trying to figure out how to stay relevant, especially as independent companies. So um, Jeremy, I'll kick this one to you first. What advice would you give other companies listening, thinking, I want to stay competitive in the market, but I don't know how? Yeah. So I think uh, there's multiple options. You can go the PE route, or you can look to doing a merger and acquisition like uh, us and Restore Right are doing. And I think ultimately you want to find something that that checks the boxes for what you're ultimately trying to do, right? And we want to make sure that we're taking care of the employees, our current employees, the new employees, that they're getting additional benefits, that it's just, it's beneficial to them, right? It's, it's tough out there with the cost of living increases and everything else that we've gone through over the last several years. And so being able to bring that and say, hey, we're giving you better health insurance. We're giving you better benefits. We're giving you 401ks. Um, and just the growth opportunity within the organization when you go from a one location to five locations, um, but really just what what are we being able to add to those employees and, and help better them? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, I'm sure it's different for everybody you know, that goes through this, but I think those were some of the key things that as me and Keen talked through making sure what, what was it giving back to the employees in the community that we we live in and work in. So. Yep. I love it. Kenyon, what about you? What advice would you give? Um, so for me, uh, it's kind of like, you know, you start a business and you're the owner operator, you and, and, and two guys, three guys, 520 guys, as soon as, as soon as you start wearing multiple hats, uh, that's when I kind of start thinking that's when this work kind of sucks, you know, when all of a sudden you're the accounts receivables guy, you're the getting the invoice out, you're the marketer, you're the getting the carpet sucked out, whatever you, you're still maybe not doing those tasks, but you're in charge with making sure those tasks are done. And some of those things, um are going to be outside of what you're like naturally gifted at what's something that actually gives you energy and why you started a business in the first place you know why did you start a business in the first place because this part is fun I, I like solving problems well it's grown to the point for me that i'm operating outside of my my genius you could say um at, at least 50 percent or more than i'm operating in it and and so we have found someone that I feel um, has a genius that that I don't, and together it's going to be a one and one equals three type of relationship. And I can uh, have comfort and confidence in the product that we're giving customers because I know they bring an elite service, and 
they have a, an amazing administrative staff to help take over some of those things that I'm dealing with every day. And then I can just focus on why I started the business in the first place. And that was to help people, to employ people. And so that's what I'm most excited about is that I get to go back to doing exactly what I wanted to do when I started it in the first place. And, um, at a, but at a lo much larger scale. I love it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, all right. Before we wrap it up, my favorite question to ask everybody is to share a favorite story, whether it's like a crazy job story or I've had a few so like sad stories that make you want to cry. And it's like, well, that ended on a high note. Great. Or whatever. So a favorite story from both of your companies that, I don't know, jobs you've been on, whatever that may be. So Jeremy, I'll kick that to you first. If you have a favorite story to share or an interesting story. Yeah. Favorite might not be the best word, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's my favorite, but I think. Yeah. One thing that I uh, live by, if you will, is I don't ever ask any of my employees to do something I'm not willing to do. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, this was this was several years ago, but it was it was a, a flood call that we got, and it was a church, and their crawl space, one of the sewer lines, had broke in the crawl mm -hmm. space. We, we suited up, we put on all of our PPE and we climbed in there and I was neck and neck deep in it with my right hand guys running that location right in there in the middle of it. And it was, it was one of the worst jobs we've ever been on, but it sticks out to me because like they still to this day will tell you like Jeremy won't ask you to do anything he's not willing to get in and do himself. And I think that's important as a leader is you lead by example, right? Um, mm -hmm. We've, we've definitely been in some pretty sh shitty situations, but uh, <laughs> we got through them. So pun intended or not. That's yes. yeah, cool. All right. Kenyon, your turn. Um, so one of the most memorable ones actually happened about a year ago that there was an abandoned home that uh, the property owners just, they had a tenant and all of a sudden the tenant just um, disappeared. They all, all his stuff was still in the home but water was coming out the windows of the basement, meaning it filled up the basement and was coming out. So six to eight feet of water in the basement. It looked like someone was still living there because his dog was still there. And we were concerned that maybe something malicious happened and there was yeah. a body floating somewhere in the basement. Yeah. And so we had the fire department there and they were having problems breaching some rooms because of the the head pressure of the water to try to get into some places. So once we got the water extracted enough, and this is this is kind of funny because if you pump water out of a house, you can't just dump it on the street, right? <laughs> well, yeah. these yeah. guys let us do that because they thought there was it was an emergency situation, right? So we're just dumping this water flooding the street. out on the street, flooding the street. <laughs> um Turns out there's nobody in there, so we're okay. But <laughs> there was two rooms downstairs that this guy was, I think, um, farming hobo spiders. There were hobo spider nests no. and hobo spiders, like tens and tens of thousands of hobo nope. spiders all oh. over this basement. And we don't know why, because it would have taken years, like, it was like, it was like a horror movie of cobwebs. Like you couldn't make it up. Like this, how like I don't. It, it's crazy that how how thick the cobwebs were and how prevalent they were. That they had to have been there for years, and this guy's just living with them. And and I kid you not, thousands and thousands of hobo spiders. Did you end up restoring the property, or it was like you got the water out and you're like, what? <laughs> Well, well we got it place. We, burn it down we got it to the studs and then he said here you go because it was uh it was just a weird scenario right it was an abandoned property that mm -hmm. i don't even think insurance covered it like it was just a really bad situation so very very unique uh call for that one though all right. That would be one of those instances where I'm here for you and I can do anything <laughs> alongside you. I will go in the sewage. The spiders would be hard. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yeah. There's no way. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was premium pay extended for everyone who went into that house. So oh it was gosh. not easy to get volunteers. Wow. 
All right. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your stories and congrats on um, the, the merger and working together. That's super exciting. Anything else that either of you want to add before we wrap it up? No, um, no, by the time this comes out, news will be out, you know, hasn't happened yet per se. Right. But uh, I know um, my wife and I were, we're really so we're excited for what this, you know, what this next chapter brings means for, for our community and our, and our employees and everything. And I, I think it's going to be a, a really awesome opportunity for us. Yeah, definitely. It's exciting for us. This is the first uh, merger acquisition that Elite has done. So it's it's definitely new for Kenny and it's new for us. Um, but excited to be able to get this one done behind us and, and kind of work through all of the nuances, if you will, and then um, continue to push and grow and be able to give that same Elite service to more and more customers. So love it. appreciate you uh, giving us some time on your podcast today. Of course. Happy to have you both here. Congrats again. And um, I hope you both have a great rest of your week and I look forward to sharing your story. For more restoration today and the latest news, visit our website, cnrmagazine.com and find the latest episodes of the Restoration Today podcast on your favorite podcasting platform.